Hey everybody, my name is Willie Martinez and uh, I'm part of the New Eurekan Poets Cafe family. Uh, I've been performing there with my group La Familia Sextet for the last 17 years, along with uh, my good friend uh, Wilson Chembo Corniel, who uh, has worked uh, the same amount of time with his group uh, Chaworo, and also the great uh, Victor Rendon, who's uh, been there with the uh, Bronx Connexion Big Band. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were there once a week, uh, each of us would rotate. Every, uh, every week, a different group. Uh, the three of us have been sharing that bill for over, ten, over 17 years. Uh, so I'm here today uh, as part of the uh, New Eureka Poets Cafe uh, Masterclass Series. Um, today, I wanna talk about cowbells. Uh, we've all heard the uh, Saturday Night Live uh, shout out, more cowbell, right? So um, today, I wanna talk about cowbells and how they are utilized in Latin music. Uh, Latin, uh, straight up Latin music and Latin jazz and the, the various things that you can do, the sounds. I wanna try and go over some technique um, for those of you who are uh, uh, players of the instrument. Uh, the cowbell is a very, very important voice in, uh, in Latin music. Uh, originally, uh, you've had cowbells like what, uh, what you saw uh, me playing uh, when, I, when we uh, first brought the show in. Um, as you could imagine, uh, the cowbell very much indeed did come from a cowbell that was dangling from the cow's neck or a goat or sheep. Um, you have to realize that back in uh, the early times of the music, uh, percussionists, there, there was no such thing as LP, you know, there, or Latin percussion. There were no mass produced cowbells. So uh, what a lot of um, percussionists would do is they would search for things that they can hit, you know, even beyond cowbells in the Caribbean, uh, things like brakes and uh, all kinds of metal objects, whether it be oil drums or whether it be um, anything out of a car. If it had a tone, a, a good percussionist is gonna identify a good tone. And you've heard of people playing pots and pans, right? So it's the same thing with uh, the cowbell. The cowbell, I think that when percussionists heard them dangling from the uh, necks of cows and, and heard the resonance that they had, they were attracted to that sound because it's a pretty sound. And um, so the very earliest cowbells uh, do have a uh, holder in the inside, in the inside of the cowbell where a clangor would attach itself and you would shake it back and forth and the cow and the bell would ring uh, because of the movement of the cow. So when you remove that clangor, you have basically your cowbell that's an open tone. Now, through the years, they uh, started, uh, your early cowbells were always played with the hand. And then later on, when the timbal uh, came into the picture in Latin music, you had uh, percussionists that would mount their bells on the timbales. Uh, there were various ways to do that. Um, they, they would string them on, they would, you know, because again, none of the, the equipment that we purchased today to mount cowbells was available back then. So basically it was uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And uh, you found a way to mount your cowbells on your timbales or, or, or uh, but mostly on the timbales. Um, and then later on on the drum set. The drum set is what I have set up here today. Uh, and this is an interesting story too, because the drum set uh, is also a very, uh, is, uh, cowbells are very old. You know, the cowbells have been around for centuries. Uh, but the drum set, the American drum set has only been around for a little over a hundred years. Um, as it is a drum set again, again, in the early days of jazz, uh, this instrument wasn't available. You couldn't go to a store and buy a drum set. You had to basically find uh, various items that came out of the marching drum tradition, whether it be a tom-tom that were played with a string around their neck or a snare drum that also was played with a, a strap around the neck, bass drum that was also hung from you and, 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 and rotated this way. And you would hit it with mallets from the side, cymbals, which again, were not on a stand like this, they were clanging together or mounted to a bass drum and hit with a stick. 
as they were as they were walking by. So all of these things, uh, and that's an interesting story. There, there's a lot of people who wonder why the drum set, the American drum set, is a lot of uh, many times called a trap set. And uh, there, I've heard quite a few, re, you know, explanations for the use of the the term trap set. My favorite, personally, is that um, when trappers used to go out and hunt for furs or whatever they were hunting for. Uh, when they came home with their satchel or with their sack full of the things that they had caught, they caught, they called that their trappings, the things that they trapped. And a lot like trappers, uh, drummers, early drummers, had to go and forage around for all kinds of things that they wanted to add to their drum set, whether it be a bass drum or a tom or a snare drum or a pair of uh, hi-hat cymbals. Again, the hi-hat cymbals were played with handles and clang together. Later on, the invention of the hi-hat stand came along and then allowed us to use our feet to manipulate the pedal. So that way those two symbols come down with one motion of the foot and not with two hands. And that's the beauty of the American drum set is that you can create all of these sounds together um, with four limbs as opposed to needing four individuals. In a marching band situation, you'd have a bass drummer, and you'd have a snare drummer, and you'd have tom drummers, and you'd have cymbal players, and you'd have triangle players, and you've had cowbell players, all kinds of different uh, instrumentalists working together to create a groove. And the beauty of the drum set is that you can alone by yourself can create all of these sounds together, working together uh, in a polyrhythmic way. Polyrhythmic means many rhythms, many rhythms working together. So uh, getting back to the cowbell, uh, in the same way that you mount your uh, cowbells to uh, your timbales, you uh, also can um, mount them to a drum set in a similar fashion. Um, the, there are, are two, two cowbells that are very popular to use in Latin music. There are many different types of bells you could use, but there are two in particular that actually uh, kind of speak the loudest in Latin music when you're playing Latin or Latin jazz. And there are two different sizes. One of them is a uh, small cowbell and the other is a larger cowbell. The smaller cowbell is called a cha-cha bell. And the reason it's called a cha-cha bell is that when you're playing the cha-cha tempo or the cha-cha speed, you, uh, you would play the quarter note on the cha-cha bell. So if I was to count, count us in, I would say one, two, two uh, one, two. So I'm playing the uh, quarter note on cha-cha bell. And that sound, that high pitched sound is something that uh, really uh, is very traditional in the style of playing cha-cha. So your larger bell is called a mambo bell uh, or sencejo. It's, uh, it's a larger bell that has more, many more overtones because you play different surfaces. You can play different surfaces on the cha-cha bell, but mostly the mouth of the bell is what you're hearing most of the time. On the uh, mambo bell, the player will play this in a, in a, to a 90 degree angle. Uh, so you're basically uh, at a 90 degree angle to the bell and you have the opportunity to play the mouth of the bell or the back end of the bell or even the side of the bell. So there are many different sides, different surfaces of the bell that you can play and elicit different sounds. So uh, basically, you, uh, when you're playing a rhythm, you can manipulate these sounds to create a uh, polyrhythmic uh, sound uh, that sounds a little bit like this. Now, before I play the drums with it, I want you to hear the different sounds that come out of the, the, the mambo bell. You have, uh, again, the mouth, the back end, and then the sides. So those are 
good. That's I love playing the, the, the mambo bell because it gives me the opportunity to, to swing hard and create all of these rhythms. Now, uh, again, we were talking about what we can do with the American drum set incorporated in Latin jazz. It allows us to create a lot of sounds. Like in other words, I can make a sound on the snare drum that sounds like a timbale, uh, and on, uh, the, the macho of the timbal. Uh, the, the smaller of the two drums, uh, uh, the timbales, you have two drums in the timba set of timbales. If you don't know what timbales are, timbales are the instrument that Tito Puente, el rey de, 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 de la música latina, he made that instrument famous, the timbales. There are two drums that are side by side. One is small and one is large. Uh, the instrument, interesting in in interestingly enough, has a male and female aspect. The uh, smaller of the two drums is called the macho and the larger of the two drums is called the hembra. The male aspect and the female aspect it has a male and female aspect, the instrument. Uh, so it has two drums. So on the smaller drum, it's very, very uh, common for the uh, timbal player to play a uh, pattern. It's not really a pattern, it's more like a riff on the uh, on the, uh, the on the macho that's called an abanico and uh, an abanico in spanish means fan so if you ever uh, remember seeing the the, the uh, fans in spain when people would open them in a in a very flourishing way they would throw it and it would sound like a rip it would, it would open up in one motion and there is a similar uh, pattern that, uh, that we play on the timbal called the abanico. And uh, it's used basically to introduce a section or um, uh, basically a punctuation mark, if you will, a rhythmic punctuation mark, the abanico is. And it sounds like this. So do you see how that roll into the smack That sounds, it elicits that same vision of, of, of someone taking a Spanish uh, uh, fan and whipping it out like this. So basically in one motion, one fluid motion, the, the, the fan opens and snaps into place. It's the same thing with the abanico. So, uh, and then, so uh, right here in, in, the, in, in, in the American drum set, I've got a timbali player in my snare drum. And that's really cool to have that one voice. Now, also in a Latin rhythm section, you'll have a conga player and a bongo player. Uh, but let's start with congas. So we know that uh, when you have a conga, you have a pattern that you play on the conga. Let's make believe for a minute that this tom tom is a conga. So there's the pattern that's played on the conga that's called the tumbao. The tumbao is the rhythm that's typically played on the conga drum. It sounds a little bit like this. I'm going to simulate it on the tom. Even though I don't have a conga here, you'll be able to hear what the pattern sounds like. Okay, so that pattern is called tumbao. And um, now we're going to bounce back to the timbal because there's another uh, part of the timbal that gets utilized quite often. And that's the side of the timbal. So actually, if we look at the tom-tom again, it is very much shaped like the timbal. It's, uh, it's a, a, a drum that looks tom-tom-like, but it doesn't have a head on the bottom like this one does. But when we play timbal, we also, beyond playing the top of the drum, we also play the side of the drum on the timbales, which is called the uh, baila or the cascara. And it goes like this. Okay, so again, now we have two voices that are typically played by a timbale player in a Latin rhythm section. We have the opportunity to make those same kind of sounds on the American drum set. And I utilize uh, a floor tom if I have one, but right now I don't have one. So when I don't have a floor tom, I use the side of the bass drum. So that way it simulates the sidearm movement that when I'm playing the timbales, uh, and you're playing the side of the drum, 
it's a it's basically a sidearm thing it's a sidearm motion of, of playing it and uh you when the timbali player plays he can play a couple of different things with his left hand you have the right hand playing the cascada rhythm that i was just playing on on the tom tom it went like this right Okay, so there's that. But then there's also a rhythm that holds everything together and it's called clave. Clave is kind of like a rhythmic clef. You know, that in uh, music, when, if you play a musical instrument like piano or guitar, you know that there are musical clefs that tell you what key a piece of music is in. Could be in F minor, it could be in G, it could be in C major, could be in many different keys. The clave is also a type of key that gives the percussionist, that allows the percussionist to know how the, the movement, the rhythmic movement of the groove. So uh, in other words, when you have, let's say you have three musicians, one is playing piano, one is playing guitar, and one is playing bass. Let's play, say that they're playing a piece in C minor, but let's say that the bass player is playing in F, in, in F major, it's not gonna sound good because you're playing out of tune. So it's the same thing with rhythm. Uh, you have clave, a rhythmic key that identifies the flow of the rhythm that we're playing together. So if there are three percussionists, a bongo player, a conga player, and a timbali player, then the clave helps them to be together in the same groove, the same way if you had a piano player and a guitar player and a bass player, if they, if they, when they play in the same key, their melodic, their melodic contributions, their melodic conversation makes sense because they're all in the same key. They're not fighting each other. And it's the same thing with percussion and rhythm. The, if you're playing, and, and I'm gonna show you two ways to approach the clave, and then I'm gonna get a little deeper into that conversation as well. Um, when I, the cascada uh, rhythm that I was playing for you, uh, it goes like this again. I'm gonna just reiterate what I was playing before. Now there is a clave rhythm. Clave is a rhythm, it's a two bar rhythm, which means that it takes two bars of music to play clave. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. That's two bars. And the clave rhythm, is it needs two bars to, to complete its phrase. So the uh, clave that I was playing with that cascara is basically what's called two, three clave. And that just means that there are two beats followed by three beats. It sounds like this. So notice that I started with two beats and with three beats. One, two, three, And if you notice the way I'm counting, I'm going one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, two bars of music. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, you can play that over and over again. And actually, and, and a melody, if you, when you're playing a melody, and it, it falls kind of right into that pocket. But there are some melodies that feel better when you get to the three part of the clave. When you get to those three beats, there are some melodies that like to start in that place as opposed to the beginning. And a lot of, and we call that three, two clave. A lot of people think there are two different types of clave, two, three, and three, two. Three, two would, again, if the two, three means that we start with two beats and then play three beats, three, two means that you start with three beats and follow it with two beats, which would sound like this. But what I like to think of clave is, is like a sine wave. A sine wave goes up and down, up and down. If you think of the down part as two, then the up part is three, two, three, two, three. But depending on where the melody falls, 
it could go start on the three part. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two. So it's a continuum. There are not two different claves. There's one sine wave, a two part and a three part. And depending on where the melody starts, that basically is the strong part uh, that, that, that the, the percussionists look for so that they know how to come together and play together in the same groove. So I'm going to play, uh, uh, let's see, we were talking about the conga drum and we were talking about clave. Now I'm gonna show you the drum, the cascara played on one hand and normally in a, in a rumba group, uh, in, a, in a traditional uh, rumba group, you would have a, a guy just playing a, a claves by himself or by herself. There'll be one person responsible for doing that. But in, the beauty of the drum set again is that we have four limbs, I have two arms and I have two legs. That means that I can simulate, I can basically break my limbs up into people. Like in other words, this is one person, this is another person. And so I can play the two uh, rhythms together. Right? So a hi-hat. Now, cymbals don't necessarily have a history in Latin music, but pulse is a big part of Latin music. And so a pulse is something that, something we lock on to that basically gives us a little salt and pepper on top of our rhythm. So if we're playing clave, we were to put a steady pulse in that. So that hi-hat sound gives us a little kind of salt and pepper on top of our clave beat. And look at the, what it sounds like when I incorporate it with the, with the cascara and the, and the clave together with the hi-hat. A lot like cla uh, uh, hand clapping. One, two, three. Uh, the clave, if you were to clap the, clap the clave, it would be. And imagine if there was a second person that while that person is playing clave, another person would be just going. That's the role of the hi hat to basically give that pulse to. And now, what I'm gonna do is incorporate the bass drum. We haven't talked about the bass drum yet. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the bass drum uh, has a history in parade marching. And uh, there are also African drums that have bass voices that are large drums. But uh, for, in terms of the drum, the American drum kit basically came out of the marching tradition. A lot of these drums did. Uh, the snare drum, the tom-toms, uh, bass drum and cymbals. Um, your bass drum, is kind of a bass voice in rhythm. So in a lot like a choir, you have, a, um, you have your altos and you have your sopranos, you have your tenors and you have your bass voices. So you have several voices that come together to create a harmony uh, uh, where you have different uh, voices in, in different pitches that when they sing together, they create a beautiful, uh, beautiful harmony. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, simulate the, uh, what I would play on the bass drum while I'm playing the cascara and the clave and the hi-hat. And think, think of maybe if there was on my, um, uh, right behind me a bass player, he would be playing again. Remember when we said that the conga drum, when he plays his pattern, that's called tumbao. Bass players also have a tumbao. And uh, their tumbao uh, is uh, something that comes off the offbeat and then a downbeat. So what that means is uh, if you were counting one and two and three and four and, the two and, one and two and, one and two 
and one and two and one and two and and then the downbeat is four one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four that's what the bass player is playing the pattern that is his tumbao that comes on the end of two and four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four boom 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 so in order to lock with the bass player, I am going to play the bass drum so that the bass drum locks, plays the same tumbao on the bass drum. So if there was a bass player here, we'd both be swinging those bass notes with the same rhythm. One, two. Okay, so again, earlier we were playing cascara and clave and hi-hat. Now I just introduced the bass voice with the hi-hat. And you see how the hi-hat kind of gives structure? The, um, what I'm playing on the bass drum is called polyrhythm. It's basically, um, uh, there's another word for it, but I'll, I'll remember in a minute. But it's a, uh, the, the, rhythms, the rhythm is different, whereas the, um, rhythm on the hi-hat is steady and the rhythm on the bass drum is more broken up. So um, now let's incorporate the bass voice and the steady rhythm of the hi-hat with the cascara uh, rhythm and the clave together. And I'll count myself in. One, two, one, two, three. Syncopated, that was the word I was trying to remember a little earlier. The uh, rhythm that's being played on the cascara is syncopated. It means that there are many different types of, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a polyrhythmic, it means multiple rhythms going on in that, in that phrase. Same thing with the clave. The clave is also a syncopated kind of beat. And then also your uh, bass drum is also a syncopated beat because it's not all on the downbeat. There's an upbeat and a downbeat. Okay, I saw a question come in, but I'm a little far away from the phone. So I'm, I, uh, it was hard to read. Um, if you flash it again, I can maybe move closer and, and uh, read it and then maybe address the question. Uh, and then, the, but the hi-hat, because it's on two and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's a steady beat as opposed to a syncopated beat. So that's the beauty of the combination of these, of a steady beat along with the syncopated uh, beats that they all to come together to make this really, really groovy feel uh, in two, three, right? Now let's revisit the tom-tom that's imitating the conga drum. Remember the, the conga drum has the tumbao. Let's try and incorporate that with my uh, left hand. And my left hand is gonna play clave, but it's gonna miss a couple of beats so that I can include the conga. So actually my left hand is gonna be doing double duty here. Let's try. So 
there we have, all right, let me see what everybody said. Hong Kong ghetto to everyone. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so basically, your, your, uh, uh, my left hand is striking the conga, the, the conga, the, the tom, to simulate what a conga player would play. So again, the beauty of all this is that I'm all by myself and I'm creating these sounds. I'm creating a bass sound, I'm creating a clave sound, I'm creating a steady rhythm on my hi-hat, and then I'm creating my, uh, my tom-tom uh, incorporated. Now, another thing, if we left the clave out, I, uh, I remember telling you that when I have the timbales in a, with the side stick, you're playing the cascara rhythm, you can play the cascara with one hand and play clave. You can play the cascara and mark the two and four that was playing on the hi-hat on the tom-tom as I was doing earlier. But you can also play both uh, timbales simultaneously and they kind of answer each other. So when one strikes, the other answers. And that would sound like this. Now that sounds a little weird by itself, but look at how smooth it sounds when I incorporate the other rhythms. So basically, um, I'm hoping that my transmission is still coming through because I the picture just changed, but hopefully you're still seeing the uh, the uh, master class. I'm going to continue speaking as if you are. Um, you uh, but now that sounds. You see the full sound that that has when you're um, when when you're playing that together. The the, the two, what what normally would be played on the two sides of the timbales when you play it on the uh, side of the bass drum and also the uh, rim of the snare drum, you're creating that, they call that double paila. Remember when I said that when you strike the side of the drum, it's called paila or cascara. Uh, when you play the two sides of the macho, which is the male drum and the embra, the female drum, when you're playing, when you're striking the sides of them together, that's called double paila or double cascara. So again, So let's incorporate that with the conga sound. Abenico. So now let's move on to the cow buzz, which is how we introduced the master class today. I wanted you to get an appreciation for all of the various polyrhythms that go into playing uh, Latin jazz and Latin music. Uh, what the, the patterns I was playing were basic rhythms so that that would be found more in your more danceable styles of Latin music. Um, there's a lot more action going on in Latin jazz because with the improvisation, uh, you would be moving around the drum set in other ways other than a dance band. In a dance band, you want to keep things steady and moving in a steady beat so that way the dancer is, is, doesn't get lost because if you're playing too busily, then the dancers are not going to be able to connect with that. So we try to keep our rhythms uh, in sync and, uh, and together and groovy so that way the dancers can enjoy themselves. But when uh, we're playing for a listening audience, we would break that up. And uh, maybe I would play um, the uh, cascada rhythm on the cymbal. And one instrument that we didn't talk about was the bongos. I know that I wanted to get to the cowbells, but we'll get there. Um, the bongo player also has a, um, a groove you know how the conga player has his tumbao, right? And the bass player has his tumbao. The bongo player uh, has a groove, a pattern that's called martillo, which is basically means a hammer. And I guess the reason if you listen to a hammer, you know, somebody hammering a nail, 
right? So the, um, the rhythm that the bongo player plays is called the martillo hammer. And uh, it sounds like this. Now that's a steady rhythm. It's a little syncopated, but it's basically steady. Uh, the cool thing about the bongos is that when the bongo player is playing the, uh, the martillo, the bongo player also plays that are improvised within the martillo, within the groove, within the pattern that are improvised and that kind of create a conversation. Uh, they call that repicando, repicar. So, uh, or repique. Uh, when, when that happens, that's all improvised. That's coming out of the, 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 the uh, feeling of the, the, the bongo player. So if you're playing, you're, a lot of times you'll hear the bongo player playing the martillo. So all of those little notes that I was playing, that's the repicando, that's kind of like a sing song that the bongo player plays. So if I was playing Latin jazz, instead of playing, uh, if I was playing, you know, if I was playing Latin jazz, instead of playing the steady groove of clave, I would maybe play the, while well, there was a soloist, whether it be a saxophonist or a, um, or a trumpeter or a trombonist, then maybe I would move from the cascara to the cymbal to accompany uh, that solo. And then maybe I would turn my snares on. And then I would maybe then treat the snare drum instead of a timbal, maybe treat it more like the bongo. And uh, not necessarily with the martillo rhythm, but with the role of creating that conversation, uh, the repicando, the, repi the repique of the, bong of the bongo to simulate that on the snare drum. So let's start with a steady rhythm and then, I'll, and then I'll, I'm gonna play clavia first on the cymbal and then I'm gonna break away and, and play, uh, and, and, and play some, something more improvised. a steady groove you heard my bass note and you heard my hi-hat locked together put giving that forward motion and also my cymbal which is the cascara rhythm that i would have played on the side but i'm playing it on the cymbal because it gives kind of this brightness that's uh, that that um, takes things to another place but what i was doing instead of playing clave i broke away from the clave right and i started repicando playing different random uh, hits on the, the, the snare drum and the tom-tom to create a conversation. And had there been a soloist here of some sort, a horn player, I would have been kind of replying and having a conversation with them with my left hand. And that's kind of what makes the, uh, the whole concept of Latin jazz very exciting. When you hear that conversation uh, between a uh, drummer's left hand and uh, what's going on around him or her. Um, so now we'll get to the, to the, to the cowbells. The cowbells uh, can be incorporated in all of this. Uh, we have the cascara and we have the cymbal or the cascara being played on the cymbal or the cascara being played on the side of the drum. But there are uh, rhythms that you can play on the cowbells. So that way you can um, basically incorporate the bells in all of that broader polyrhythmic groove. So remember when we were talking about uh, the cha-cha bell? Let's uh, play an abanico, a fan, abanico, and then start playing uh, the cha-cha bell along with our bass voice and our hi-hat 
and create a little groove, okay? And we'll see what that sounds like. One, uh, two, uh, one, two. we had was a bass voice and a steady bass voice, a steady hi-hat, the tom-tom simulating the conga drum, a little slap on the side stick of the snare drum, simulating maybe the slap on the conga, maybe simulating a piece of the martillo that the bongo player would play. So all of these things come together the same way three percussionists would come together, a bongo player, a conga player, a timbali player playing together. I'm creating all of that with myself, with my four limbs. Um, and creating the sound on the, on the cha-cha bell. Now, here's a part that I really, really like, and we were talking earlier about the mambo bell and the different sounds that it makes, uh, the mouth again, the back end and the side. <laughs> Let's incorporate everything else that I was playing before, your bass voice, tom, snare, and hi-hat, and bring the cowbell into the mix. One, two, one, two. sound of the cowbell or the mambo bell because it has all of these surfaces that you can create uh, basic uh, polyrhythms with and it has a, it sounds like there are two or three bells happening right because you have the mouth and you have the edge and then you have the side so when you learn how to, to play a cowbell you learn to manipulate these different surfaces and create this groove this pocket this uh, flavor within the context of our, our, our big picture. So uh, when I started the master class, I was playing a different bell. These two bells are mounted on the drum set the same way that I would have mounted them on my timbales. Um, when I started the master class, I was playing this handbell. Now, normally a bongo player would be playing bongos. He would have a pair of bongos. You know what bongos are? They're, they're two drums that are basically tethered together with a little piece of wood and they're played between the legs. And you basically uh, play your martillo. And so when the, that's usually in the beginning of a song and when we get to the, uh, basically the more exciting parts of the song, the montunos, um, you would then, the bongo player would then switch and play the handbell. We have uh, different surfaces that are being manipulated in this bell. We have the mouth. We have the top, uh, the back end. And those two are basically what allow us to create this sound. Um, another thing that you might want to um, think about is that when you're holding a cowbell, uh, if I'm holding it firmly with my fingers, you hear it kind of sound, sounds tap, damp, tamped down, like, like as if there's a rag in it. So the art of playing a cowbell is to be able to let it float in your hand. So that way you're letting it sing. If I was just to hold it like this, you see the open sound that it has? But if I tamp it down my hand, 
but those two sounds can work together to create kind of a rhythm. See how I'm lifting my fingers off the belt to free it up. Open, tamp, open, tamp, open, tamp. And when I'm playing the bottom, you see, I take my fingers away. When I put my fingers back on, Cool, right? I love cowbells. Uh, cowbells propel, they have a way of propelling the music in like no other instrument. And it's just one bell and it just can basically what we call drive the bus. It could just basically, you can, there the great bongo players like the great Johnny Rodriguez that used to play with the Tito Rodriguez Orchestra and with Tipica 73. John is probably one of the best examples, in my opinion, of somebody that dominates an entire orchestra with his cowbell playing. He is so strong and so, so authoritative that when he uh, plays the instrument, it basically drives everything. It drives everything. It inspires everybody. And uh, there's a real beauty in this instrument. Uh, it, and, and cowbells in general just have just such beautiful sound, such power. These are really powerful instruments. Uh, I love them very much, and I, and, and I love sharing my passion for these things with you. Um, so we'll kind of wrap things up probably with uh, an example of, of some other rhythms that I might play um, utilizing the cowbell. One of my favorites is, is probably the 6-8 uh, the pattern. Uh, the, it's more of, of a kind of like a, a patterns that are used in ceremonial music in, in, in the Caribbean, uh, in Cuba in particular, uh, where you would have um, dancers and ceremonies that would feature this type of groove. So again, using my hands, if you uh, notice that I'm having, a, there's a tamp down sound and then there's an open sound, a muted sound, let me, uh, a muted sound and an open sound. So what I like doing uh, is, is taking that groove and uh, incorporating it on my big picture here with my drums. So again, in the same way that there's a tumbao in the, uh, in, in the earlier rhythms that I was playing with you on the conga, there's also a uh, tumbao that locks with the pattern that I was just playing on the cowbell, on the on the on the on the bongo bell. Uh, again, that pattern is. In that case, the conga player would play a tumba like this. So. What I'd like to do is incorporate the uh, cowbell that the cowbell pattern that I was playing on the bongo bell to play it over here on the mambo bell, and incorporate the um, the tom tom to imitate the conga pattern, the conga tumbao that would normally be played in that pattern, and then here on the bass voice. Instead of playing the syncopated uh, and of two and four, if you were playing the um, the six eight pattern on this bell, basically all your bass voice would do is just play on one, one single hit.
And then there's another instrument, a gourd instrument called a shekere. And a gourd is basically a, uh, a, I don't know if it's a plant or a vegetable. It has seeds, so maybe it is a, a, a vegetable. But it, uh, it something like a, uh, a melon or a, a, I'm trying to think what, is, what are examples of gourds, a squash. Uh, but um, if you were to hollow out a gourd and let it dry, it would have a hard shell. And then a shekere, uh, uh, the tradition is to wrap it in with string and beads or shells so that it has kind of a shake kind of fat sound to it. So your shekere would play also on, on the one and the, uh, uh, during that, that as well. And we could simulate that with the hi-hat sound. So that's one approach for the hi-hat in, in when you're playing that rhythm. But I kind of like playing the uh, hi-hat on the opposite side of that, because it kind of, for me, it propels the groove differently. So what I'm gonna do now is play, the, I'm gonna play what I was playing on the bongo bell, on the timbal bell. I'm gonna create my one single hit on the bass drum and since I'm playing one here, I don't want to play one here because they're going to have two, two uh, limbs playing the same beat. So I want to split them up. So, and then I'm going to simulate the uh, conga pattern, the timbal that I would normally go with the 6 8 pattern. I'm going to try and somewhat simulate that on the tom-tom uh, while playing all the other voices with my other limbs. Okay, so here we go. Wait, let me step over here. And... Okay, sorry about that. I was running out of power. So here we go. That's a really groovy beat. I really love that. Um, and then remember when I was saying that when you're playing in Latin jazz that you, when, when the, you'd want to kind of interact a little bit more. When there are dancers, you want to keep that groove steady the way I was just playing it. But if you're playing in more of a uh, jazz situation or a Latin jazz situation, you want to be, be, uh, be a little bit more explorative and, and, and basically converse with your other instruments, whether it be horns or piano or bass. So I'm gonna show you what it's like to loosen that up and, 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 and take it in different places. stretching out a little bit within the context of that 6-8 pattern. And again, that's where the excitement comes in. It's like, um, basically you kind of can create, in, you, know, you can improvise all of this stuff while keeping a relatively steady uh, beat with your bass drum and your hi-hat, you uh, can uh, use your upper limbs, your arms, to basically uh, create this conversation that sits on top of what's going on with your legs. It's really, really good stuff. It's really groovy. And uh, the whole thing to practice is basically the fundamentals of just basically playing simply at first. <laughs> And 
then incorporating other things later. for today. I'm going to join you again, I believe, uh, in December on the 16th. I'll look forward to that. I want to thank the New, Eure New Eurekan Poets Cafe for all of their support throughout the years and for giving me this opportunity to bring my passion to you as a Latin percussionist and to share these things with you. Um, whether you're a, a musician or not, I hope that you found it interesting and informative and give you a little insight into my world as a percussionist. Um, I'm very, very grateful to the New Yorican Poets Cafe for giving me that opportunity. Uh, I'm going to say good night to you, and I thank you so much for your kind attention. I hope you got something out of uh, my time with you this evening, and I look forward to seeing you again in December when we'll wrap up 2020. Whew, what a year it's been, right? Uh, we'll wrap it up in December and uh, see you again in the new year. So uh, on behalf of myself, Willie Martinez, and everybody at the New Yorican Poets Cafe, I'm going to bid you a good night and uh, blessings to you all. And, and uh, uh, always remember that a little percussion in your life makes it that much better. It's the salt and pepper of life. Have a good night. Great to be with you. <laughs>